In this video, we will see how we can read from files in our Java application. Java supports two types of files. The first type is text files, where the data is stored as characters, and the second type are binary files, where the data is stored as row bytes. You need to know how, um, how the data is stored in your file, what type of file that you have, to be able to use the appropriate class to read or write to that file. And here we are only interested in reading from text files. These text files will be stored in our system, in, on our desk or on a remote um, desk. We will need to know the path of that text file and we'll use that path to create a file object in Java where we map this Java object to the actual um, file. Once we have this file object, we'll use that file object as our source of input to a scanner. Before, when we were reading from the console, we used our source of input as system.n. Now the source of input will be this file object that we created that maps to the actual text file in our system. Once we have our scanner reading from that file um, location, we'll be using the scanner methods that we used before, next line, next integer, next double, to read the actual data from that file. So we'll be using these two constructors. The first one is for the file class, when we create the file object, this constructor will take a path. This is the location of our file in the desk, and this will be a string um, parameter. The second constructor is the scanner constructor, which we saw before, but instead of using the system.n here, we'll be using the file object that we created here as our source of input. Now, bo both of these constructors could cause an exception to happen. One is the null pointer exception for the file um, constructor and then we have a file not found exception for the scanner constructor. Now the file not found exception is considered a checked exception, which means that if you do not handle the exception in your program, Java will not allow you to compile that program. So at compile time, Java will check if you handled that exception or not. If you did not handle it, it will not allow you to comp compile it. So when we create our scanner object with that file, since it might be throwing a file not found exception, which is a checked exception, we need to surround that scanner with a try catch statement. So let's try reading from a file. I'm gonna create a new file in my project here. I'm gonna right click and then go to new and then file. I will select my project in here and then I'm gonna call that file, let's call it file one. So this is my file actual file that I want to read from and I actually created it in the same project so that means I do not need the full path to read from that file I only need the file name to be able to read from it I'm just gonna write a statement here this is file 1 I'm gonna close it it will ask me to save and I'm gonna save that file now in here the first step to read from a file is actually to create a file object this is the file class I will call my file file1 and this will equal to a new file using the file constructor and the file constructor will take a string with the location of that file in our system. Again, since your file is in the same project, not in the source folder, it's in the root directory for the project, you only need the file name in here, which is file1. Notice we have this red underline because we need to import the class file from the java.io package. So once we import java.io.file, you will not have that red line. So now we have a Java object that maps to the actual file on our system. The next step is to create a scanner. Let's call it scan. And this scanner will be using that file as the input source. So new scanner with that file in our parentheses. So the file object, we created a file object called file1, and that's our source of input. We need to import the java.util.scanner, and then you'll notice we still have that red line. Why? Because we did not handle the exception. This line could be throwing an exception, and we need to handle that exception in our code. This is a checked exception. You will not be able to compile unless you handle that exception either by throwing an exception or surrounding it by a try-catch block. If you click on the surround with try-catch, it will surround it for you. And this is the exception we are catching, which is the file not found exception. 
The file not found exception means this file that we are trying to read from is not available. We cannot find that file in our system. So now that we have our file, we have the file, we have the scanner. The scanner is in a try, so if it throws an exception, we will catch it. And here we are using the exception object to print the stack trace. There are multiple methods we can use with our exception object. One of them is the print stack trace. We have the toString that we saw before. And we also have the get message, which will print the message for that exception. You can use any of them to display an error message directly, or you can just use the system.out.println and say we did not find the file so the user can understand what's happened. So now we have the scanner object that reads from the file. The next step, we can actually create a string to read the actual data from that file. So I'm going to create a string and let's call it line. And this will read the line from the scanner. So scan dot next line. So that will go to the file and it will read from the beginning of the file until the end of the line. This will be stored in this string and let's actually go print that string to the console. So system dot out dot print line and we are printing line one or line it's called. So let's save and run. Let's see what happens. You will see it printed. This is file one, which is the line that we read from the file we have. This is our file one. If we double click on it, this is the line that we had in file one. So we can use all the scanner methods that we used before when we were reading from the console, like the next, which returns the next token. And again, the token is from the location of the reader until the next white space. The next line reads from the location of the reader until the end of the line. So if we are in the middle of the line, it will read from that location until the end of the line. The next integer, it will read the next integer location if we have an integer there. If we do not have an integer, integer value at that location, that will read an input mismatch exception. So if we are expecting to read an integer and we did not have an integer, we had, for example, uh, a string in there that will cause an input mismatch exception. If we try to read the line and we do not have a line there, so we reach the end of the file or the file was empty, this will cause a no such element exception. Same thing for the integer and for the next, if we reach the end of the file, that will cause a no such element exception. So what we need to do before we read, we need to check do we have data there or not. How do we check? We can use the has next method. The has next method will return a boolean. If we have a next value, that, that method will return true. If we do not have a next value, that will return um, false. The next line will check, do we have uh, lines? Do we still have another line on, uh, in this file? If we have, we will get back true. If we do not, we'll have back false. Has next integer, we'll check if we have the next value as an integer. The has next double will have check if the next value is a double and so on. So before we read, we need to check that we have a value to read and then we will do the read operation. So let's go back to our file. Let's add another line. So let's say this is line one and let's add another line. This is line two. I'm gonna close and save. And then I want to read that line in here. So the first line or we read this line, let's read it again. So line is now equal to scan equals to scan dot next line. And then we want to print that line again. So the first time we read, we read the next line. So the first line is printed and then we'll print the second line in here again. So I'm going to just paste it and then run it. And you'll see it printed. This is line one and this is line two. Now, if we try to repeat the operation again, since we only have two lines in our file, when we try to read the third line, we'll have an error. And this error will be the um, no line found exception, no such element exception. And this is the message no line found. Because we do not have three lines, we try to read after the end of the file. So we did not have data to read and this caused this exception to happen. So again, how can we avoid this? Before we read the line, we can actually check if the scanner, so scan dot has next line or has next. So if the scanner has next line, 
in that case we will read it otherwise we will not read that line so if the scanner has an x line has an x line we will read that line otherwise we will not do anything in there so let's run this code again so you'll notice it read the first and the second line and then we check do we have a third line since we did not we did not try to read that third line and it did not cause an error so ideally we need to check before each line or before each read operation if we have a line or not and another thing we notice here every time I read the line I'm repeating the same operation so I can utilize the looping that we learned about before and check if we have an X line in that case I want to read it and print it out so instead of doing this operation over and over again I can replace this with a while loop so while so while the scanner scan has next line in that case I want to read that line and print it out so I have a string here called line so string line and then I can have line equals scan dot next line and then I can print that line to the console so system dot out dot print line and I will print that line so before we read anything we check do we have an X line if we have we'll read that line store it in that string and print it to the console we'll go back again to the while loop do we have an X line? If we have, we'll do the same operation. If this is false, we do not have an X line, we'll stop reading the file. So now, no matter how many lines we have in the file, we'll keep reading until we um, reach the end of the file. So if I run this now, you'll see it read two lines. If I add another line here, this is line three and save it. If I run it now, it will read these three lines. If I don't have any lines, it will also work it will not cause me an error because before we read we check do we have a line or not so we do not have an exception or an error so no matter how many lines you have your code will be able to read all these lines we check do we have an X line if we have an X line we'll read that line and then we are printing it out to the console now the files do not have to be only strings we could have numbers integers double values any kind of data in there so instead of using the next line we can use the next to check if we have data left in that um, file so let's say we have integers in here so 10 20 30 these are my values and I want to read them as integers instead of using a string I'm gonna use an integer and let's call it number and I will read that number using the next integer instead of next line and then I will print that number into my console so again our data does not have to be only string lines we can have actual numbers in there so let's save this and run it and you'll see it's actually reading these numbers and printing them out also our files could have a combination between strings and numbers in them so for example let's say I'm storing the grades for a couple of students so let's say Sam got 10 and let's say Mike got 20 and then Tim got 30 so these are the grades for students we have the student name in a line then followed by the grade of that student in another line so what we need to do is we want to read the student name and we want to read their grade and let's actually print them on the same line so we read the student name and then we say got 10 points for example Mike got 20 points stem got 30 points so to be able to read we will be using the same while loop while we have next data we want to read that data but instead of reading now only a string or a number we want to read a string followed by a number so to do that let's actually create a string value here string name outside our loop and then while our file has a next value the first value we are reading will be the name so name this is how our file is structured name is equal to scan dot next line so that will read the full line for us and store it in that string and then we are going to the next line and getting the integer in that line 
However, it's important to note that the next integer does not move the reader to the next line. So that's when we read the name Sam, we read the full line. So Sam had next line. That means we read until the end of the line and we move the reader to this beginning of the line. When we use the next integer, it will read that integer, but it will keep the reader here. So when we read the next line, it will go from here and then it will stop here. So next line, it will read from here until the end of the line and it will move the point reader to the next line. Now the next read operation, we are trying to read now an integer and this is not an integer. So that will cause an error called input mismatch exception. So let's try this. We are going to actually print out system dot out. We have the print line in here actually. So name plus number. We want to print the name plus a number. So again, we tried to read the name, then the grade, but we did not move the pointer or the reader to the next line. So that will cause me an input mismatch exception. So we actually were able to read the first name with the next line. We read the number with the integer, but then when we tried to read the next value, we tried to read it as an integer because we did not move the reader to the next line. So how do we fix it? After we read the integer, we need to move the pointer to the next line. To move the pointer to the next line, we only need to use scan.nextLine and that will move the pointer to the next line. However, we also have a problem. When we read the first line, we read Sam, then the number 10, that's the first read operation, and then we move to the next line after the 10. So that moved it here. The next line we read Mike, and then the grade, which is 20, and then we moved using the next line, we moved to Tim. Then the third time we are reading Tim with the next line, we are reading the next integer, which is this number, and then we are trying to move to the next line, but we do not have a next line. So that will also cause me another error, which is the um, no such element exception. So if we run this, we'll get, we'll read the first two lines, but then we'll have the no such element exception, which is no line found. So before we move the pointer to the next line, we want to check if scan has next line, in that case, we'll move to the next line. Otherwise, we will just stop and that will mean we are ending the loop. So let's run this again. And you'll see we are printing all these values without any problems. So again, the next integer does not move the reader to the next line. So when we read this next integer 10, we kept the reader here. When we try to read the name, we actually read from here until the end of the line and then we move the pointer here. We are trying now to read an integer and this is not an integer and that's what caused that error for us, which is input mismatch exception. So when you read from a file, you might encounter multiple types of exceptions. The first exception we saw was the file not found exception, which means that we are trying to read from a file that does not exist. So that's an exception that you need to keep in mind. And actually Java does not allow you to compile unless you handle that exception in your code. Another problem that you can face is to try to attempt to read data that does not exist. So you reach the end of the file and you are trying to read data in there. So that will cause you a no such element exception because you reach the end of the file and there's no more data to read and that will cause this no such element exception. Also, if you are trying to read, for example, an integer, but you have a string, or you try to write, uh, read an integer and you found a double value, that will also cause a no input mismatch exception in there. The last type of exception is if you try to read from an input stream after you have closed it. So you close your file, you close your scanner, and then you try to read again. That will cause you an illegal state exception, and that's when you close the file or you close your input stream and then try to read from that input stream.